Watch the entire video my lovely viewers, I mean from start to finish, to get the whole thing. Without wasting much of your time, let's get right into it. Hi lovely viewers, it's me again, your one and only Mtati Mpundu. Welcome to my YouTube channel. If this is your first time on my channel, kindly subscribe to my YouTube channel by hitting the red subscribe button down below and turn the bell icon to join the notification squad. Don't forget to like, share and leave a comment. Tell me what you think about this video in the comment section below. I'll be super glad to hear from you lovely viewers. Thank you so much. Thank you for jumping on here. Thank you for hopping on here very quickly. We've got a few things to talk about. Let's begin by first of all, as many of you know, and one of the reasons I love to lay into him is because he's such an easy target. I mean, people think that my admonition to him is, is it comes from a very animalistic point of view. It doesn't. Some of you think that uh, I harangue him. The other day, somebody says, why would he be Well, as long as he's making news, as long as he's saying things that are worth talking about we will continue addressing him let me just turn this up just a tiny bit i hope i'm not too loud so anyway i, I don't want you guys to think that and, and and there's not a resentful bone in my body i mean there's nothing about bakambuli that rubs me the wrong way apart from the fact that sometimes he doesn't he doesn't have a very good command of the english language that bothers me it really does and there are many times he said things that I've just let slide by only because, you know, I, I, I didn't think that it, it was apropos. It was necessary for me to, to hammer away. And like the old saying goes, you don't kick a man when he's down. But, but, but today, I really must deal with this because it would be disingenuous on my part. It would be folly. Nay, nay, it would be irresponsible of me to let Bachishimba Kambwili off the hook when it comes to his recent rantings. Do you know what it means when somebody rants? To rant means ukusabaila. Muchibe mba tutila ukusabaila. Ukusabailo. Mwanesho ukusabaila? Ukusabaila means you, you talk a lot but make very little sense. Ekusabaila. So sometimes Rakambwili does that. He gets ahead of himself, you know. I mean, there are many times we've heard him say things that just didn't make any sense. For example, there's one time he said, and he was very categorical. He was, oh, I'll tell you what, he was convinced. He was drenched in conviction. He was a guest on one of the television shows, and he said, I will never go back to the NPF, to the notorious patriotic front. I find it, I consider it an insult of the highest order for you to insinuate and he used the word insinuate that's but that's about the only word i've ever heard about come really use correctly insinuate for you to insinuate to imply i would consider myself mad a runatic he said it's actually lunatic but he said runatic well here it is he's back at the mpf i mean talk about a flip-flopper Talk about a man that's just not decided. Talk about a man that's riding the fence. Pick a side, for goodness sake, pick a side. It's either your yes, the, the word of God says, let your yes be yes and your no be no. Don't wallow in ambiguity. Don't wade in the waters of uncertainty. Don't stand on the fence of indecision. Make up your mind. Let your yes be yes and your no be no. So, so here it is, you know, after all that showboating, he's back with them, you know, he's back with the NPF. And he's not only is he back, he's contending. He, he, he's contending for the highest office in the faction of the NPF, led by Ed Galungu, which doesn't make any sense to me. I mean, he knows, Vakambuli knows, that Ed Galungu has declared that he's, he's going to return to active politics. Oh, that's one hand. On the other hand, uh, Vakambuli himself openly says i'm vying for the presidency it can be heaven on earth if you were to hand me this country back first of all 
It's up to the Zambian people. Nobody is going to bequeath this nation to you. Nobody is going to wake up and say, oh, Makambuiri, mm, Ichadwechi. You're going to have to canvas. You're going to have to hit the campaign trail from east to west, north to south, every single province in this nation, every district, every nook, cranny, every nuance of the electoral territory of this nation, and convince the Zambian people that you are a better alternative to one Hagainde Ichilima. Bakambuidi, let's just be real. It, 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 it's highly unlikely that the Zambian people would vote for you over HH. The, the, the comparison is almost non-existent. No, not, not to mean that you're not a contender. I'm not saying that. I'm not suggesting that you're worthless. I'm not saying that because, you know, you do have something to say. Okay, let's just be clear. I think that, you know, in the grand scheme of things, you do have something to say. But comparatively, because the Zambian people have raised the bar of leadership. The moment we put this man, as imperfect as he is, and he's imperfect, I mean, far be it from you or anybody else to suggest that HH is perfect. He's far from perfect, but I tell you what, he's a whole lot better than those scoundrels we had a few years ago. That's a fact. Stick that in your pipe and smoke it. It's real. Say something. Wake up and smell the coffee. The truth is, when push or if push comes to shove and the Zambian people had a choice, Highly unlikely because the Zambian people, the Zambian electorate has raised the bar of leadership. It's highly unlikely that the Zambian people would choose you over HH. Notwithstanding, it's up to the Zambian people. It's not up to you. It's not up to your decree. It's not according to your declaration. It's not according to your self-absorbed view of the grand political scheme of things. No, no. It depends purely, solely, entirely, completely, holistically on the Zambian people. And when the time comes, and mark my words, the time will come. When the time comes, it's going to be election season again. And the Zambian people, once again, will have an, a, another opportunity to either bring this administration back or bring in someone else. It's purely up to us. Isn't that the beautiful thing about democracy? I love that about, about democracy. I love that. So, so here it is. I said all of that to say this. I, I, I do not have any personal grudge against him. I, I do not. My, my only desire is to correct him when he errs, when he misses the mark, when he goes off the tracks, when he becomes uh, 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 delusional, okay, it, that's, that's, that's my calling, is to set him straight. So here it is. A few days ago, Rakam Bwili made reference to a colloquial word, a slang word that the head of state used. Now, I, I personally, I, I do not use that word. It's a street word. It's a term. I can't even spell it out because... You know, I mean, if my mother watched this broadcast and she saw my wife or my mother watch this broadcast, and, and if I put that word up there, you know, the first phone call, first my wife would phone me. What the heck is that word doing up there? That's what my wife would say. As soon as I get off the phone, my mother would call me. Yeah, if you're not on Facebook. That's exactly what she would say. So, but you know what this word is. You know what it means. Now, the colloquial meaning of this word as everybody understands it, means to beat you severely. If someone says in Bemba Nalaku, this word, it means I'm going to beat you so bad, I will slap the black off of you so bad it will rattle your, your kin and your ancestors. That's basically what this word means. And it's a colloquialism. It's, it's a slang where everybody on the street uses it. They use it. I personally wouldn't use it, but they use it. And, and what the president was trying to communicate, because you, in order for you to understand the context of this word, as was spoken by the president, at that time, during the time of the NPF, guys, have you forgotten how things were? When the NPF decided to pursue you, vanquish you, conquer you, and subdue you, when they made it up in their minds that they were going to make you take you through hell, they would administer this word. 
This word basically means to beat you to a pulp, beat you within an inch of your life, beat you so bad that when you go to the hospital, they take you straight to the emergency room. That's what this word meant. So when the president used this word, what he was saying was in those days, the NPF would, would, would say this to us and they would, they would do this. In many cases, they would do this. They would beat you so badly, especially if you were a member of the UPND. I often give you this example of City Market. And one of the things I've always been thankful for President Hakainde Hichilema for, I've repeatedly said it and I will never stop saying it because this is the one thing that I was very closely associated with. I saw it every single day. It's a, it was a part of my daily routine. And when HH became president through one word, just a word that came out of his mouth, I saw City Market instantly transformed. Do you remember? Let me take you back. Before HH became president, in City Market, nobody could even wear the color red. Nobody. The PF Cutters didn't care if you were a Manchester United fan. The PF Cutters didn't care if you were an Arsenal fan. If you wore red and you said, I'm a Manchester United fan, the PF Cutters would look at you, grab you by the neck and say, You're a spy. You are here to try to infiltrate the intricate nuances of this market. You are trying to brainwash our people and try to persuade them to join the UPND. And as such, Tualaku, this word and they used to do it but here's the miracle here's the miracle the day and i'll never forget this and i'll never stop talking about it the day hh became president the one of the first words that he used was be magnanimous i've, I've never heard an african president use that word be magnanimous be gracious be welcoming Nobody should be faulted for wearing a political party of their choice and their persuasion. If that's who they support, leave them. That's their choice. That's their democratic right. The moment those words came out of HH's mouth, like a miracle, our people changed. All of a sudden, I saw a woman in the market using as a cover for her goods, her dry goods. She would cover her goods with uh, uh, Edgar Lungu's Chitenge. Next to her, another woman would cover her goods with an HH Chitenge in city market. It was like a miracle. I was, I was seeing it, but I couldn't believe it. One word. That's leadership. That is leadership. One word. The whole situation changed. So when the president referred to this word, he was saying that in those days, the PF cutters would, and they meant it. Bakambuili takes the word, and then he gives us a high definition definition of the word. Now, the truth is, he could be, Bakambuili was probably correct in defining the word, you know, from a Bemba perspective. I don't doubt. It's his Bemba prowess. You can't defeat Kambuili. When it comes to if you have a Bemba, ah, he's number one. So when it comes to defining what this word means in the strictest form of the term, I don't doubt him. But I do know that when the president used this word to describe the political, volatile, violent atmosphere of this country prior to his administration being voted in, the president was correct. He was absolutely correct because this was the attitude of the NPF. That's what the president was saying. And that's what he meant. But Bakambuili's definition was not in the president's mind. I can guarantee you, HH was not sitting there thinking about a monkey's foreskin. I can tell you that. He was talking about the violent, vociferous, animalistic, brutal nature of the PF. When they were in power, they felt that they were gods. They were barbarians. They were black Vikings. 
destroying everything and anything in their path. Thank, aren't you glad you live in a time when that is long gone? You look at our friends in Zimbabwe. Zanu PF. Zanu PF Kadas. You go to Zimbabwe, see what they're doing to their people. And you think we can go back to that type of lifestyle? Not here, not in Zambia, not these boys and girls. We are done with that lifestyle. The Zambian people have spoken, and they've spoken clearly. Kuti, this is not the type of life we want for us, our children, and the next, the next generation. No, no. That lifestyle has passed. We are not going back there. We're not. Our friends in Zimbabwe are suffering under the hands of the ZANU PF cadres. It's atrocious. Atrocious to use a mild, watered down, diluted word. The truth of the mother is we're not going back to that lifestyle. So when you hear HH refer to this word that starts with a P and is proceeded with the letter O and ends with A, what he was talking about was the political, violent, brutal characteristic of the PF cadres as they were prior, prior to 2021, before HH and his boys took over. So, Mane, let's, let's major on the minors. I mean, let's major on the majors and minor on the minors. Okay, let's just be clear. So, so Bakam really was, was wrong when he started talking about the foreskin of a monkey. HH was not thinking about that. And far be it from you, Bakam really, to think about that. Nobody ever thinks about that. Here on the street, Banupa, <coughs> Banupa Simon Mwewa, City Market. Nobody thinks about the foreskin of a monkey. When they use this word, it simply means to beat you to a pulp, to beat you within an inch of your life, Walanda. Alright, that's all for you today, lovely viewers. If you did enjoy the video, please don't forget to leave a comment in the comment section below. Tell me what you think about the video you just watched in the comment section below. I'll be super glad to hear from you, lovely viewers. Once again, I go by the name of Mutati Mpondu. I love you, peace. I gotta go.